Hey everyone, and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. Today's video takes you through all you need to know in order to pick up on and diagnose a gluteal tendinopathy, being it a gluteus minimus or a gluteus medius tendinopathy. So let's start with subjective signs. First of all, your patient's pain will be located around the lateral hip, and more specifically, posterior laterally to the greater trochanter. Pain can sometimes radiate down the lateral thigh, or a little more posteriorly towards the buttock. However, pain radiating to the lower back or SIJ, as well as pain and or paresthesia radiating past the knee, should be primarily considered to be of lumbar spine origin. It is important to remember, though, that 25-30% to 30 of people with low back pain also present with a gluteal tendinopathy. The key driver in terms of pathophysiology of this condition is when the hip is placed in excessive adduction, which stretches and compresses the insertional gluteus medius and minimus tendons, and so this should be considered when your patient is describing their aggravating factors. For example, this excessive adduction may occur in static positions, such as slouch standing, or sitting with one leg crossed over the other. Another very common one is lying on the affected side at night. Also consider activities such as walking, running, or going up and down stairs, where poor hip control can lead to the hip being in a more adducted position during said activity. If patients say getting out of a chair aggravates their lateral hip pain, check to see if their knees are in a valgus position when they stand up. Definite increased hip adduction here. Also consider the timing of onset. Like with all tendinopathies, your patient may describe a sudden increase in activity or a sudden burst of overload as a cause for their symptoms. A previously inactive person who says, I have just started training for a half marathon, can be a telltale sign. Look out for signs of hip adduction in your objective testing as well, perhaps during your patient's gait, or perhaps with functional movements like a lunge. Here you can see a significant amount of hip adduction as the patient performs this movement. Now, recent reviews of gluteal tendinopathies have looked at a series of tests that can be used for diagnosis. Some of our favourite tests, because they have been shown to most effectively diagnose the condition, are as follows. Firstly is the 30-second single leg stance on the affected leg, where reproduction of lateral hip pain on that leg is a positive sign. Your patient may try to displace their trunk laterally, which offloads the gluteal tendons. As you can see, the hip now goes into more of an abducted than an adducted position. If they do this, make sure you correct them. This test is shown to have been 100% sensitive and 90% specific in diagnosing a gluteal tendinopathy. We also have Faber's test, where Faber stands for flexion, abduction and external rotation, the position you put your patient's affected hip in. Whilst this test was not initially created specifically for gluteal tendinopathies, reproduction of lateral hip pain when your patient is in this position is a positive sign. Next is to bring the affected hip into an adducted position and test isometric resisted hip abduction from there. This test makes sense because as we said before, excessive hip adduction affects the glute med and min tendons. Here both reduced abduction strength and or the reproduction of lateral hip pain can tell you your patient has a gluteal tendinopathy. Our next test is resisted internal hip rotation, starting from a fully externally rotated position where once again, the reproduction of lateral hip pain is a positive sign. Finally is simple palpation of the greater trochanter of the hip, where you would certainly expect to reproduce your patient's pain if they have a notably irritable gluteal tendinopathy. And that completes our video. Thank you as always for watching and for all our best tips and videos, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep watching Clinical Physio.